So before I talk about what ignoring the 3D means, I'm going to talk about what ignoring the 3D does not mean. Maybe this will help paint a better picture. One of the most common areas of confusion is when it comes to ignoring the 3D. It is long past overdue that I've made a video talking about what the hell to do with our 3D in this whole process, in this journey of conscious manifestation. What do we do about the 3D? Are we ignoring it or what? This is a point of struggle for many. And it's actually a point that gets mixed up a lot. So let's talk about that today. With that said, hi, my name is Missy Renee. On this channel, we talk all things manifestation and conscious creation. So if that's up your alley, don't forget to subscribe. And if you enjoy the content, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. If you are interested in any of my resources, I've got links down in the description box to my coaching programs, my courses and workshops, and all of that good stuff. You can find it down below, so don't forget to check it out. So the 3D is kind of the bane of our existence in this whole process. It sucks, we don't like it, we want to change it, and that's why we're here. And that is why one of the very first things that we learn is that we need to ignore the 3D. And this is one of the most misunderstood concepts in all of this. One of the biggest areas that I see people struggling in is when it comes to the 3D and what do we do with it? How do we interact with it? How do we navigate it? So that's what I want to talk about today. Because if people are getting the wrong idea about this aspect, about the 3D, we may have a bad time. And essentially what we are told to do is to just ignore the 3D. Just don't pay attention to it, don't give any meaning to it, because the 3D doesn't matter. The 3D isn't real. It's just an illusion. It's all an imagination, and that's where the real stuff is at. But naturally, this comes so much easier said than done. Because for those who might not be aware, we are living in a 3D world. We are experiencing a 3D world. There's no escaping that, really. As humans, we are going to be existing and experiencing this three-dimensional plane. And this is the first point and probably the biggest point of misunderstanding. We take away from this that we need to literally ignore the 3D, as in bury our head in the sand, try to tell ourselves or convince ourselves that what is happening around us isn't real. This is also known as being delusional. And what results in happening is something along the lines of this. Oh, my SP loves me. My SP loves me. What are you talking about? Oh, I'm just ignoring my 3D and just living in my head where my SP loves me. Yeah, but they're not talking to you. What makes you think they love you if they're not talking to you? Well, I'm ignoring that, <laughs> obviously. Yeah, but that doesn't make it any less real. Shut up, shut up, my SP loves me. And then we continue to argue with ourselves and go back and forth and it just becomes a perpetual motion of just that. And for a lot of people, this feels like we are lying to ourselves. It feels like we're deluding ourselves. It feels like we're dissociating from reality. And these are obviously things that are not great. And rest assured, if this is what you're doing or how you've been approaching this, this is not the way to go about it. This is not what ignoring the 3D means. So before I talk about what ignoring the 3D means, I'm going to talk about what ignoring the 3D does not mean. Maybe this will help paint a better picture. Ignoring the 3D is not lying to yourself. Ignoring the 3D does not mean that we are deluding ourselves or living in denial of what the 3D looks like. It doesn't mean that we are acting as if or pretending like the 3D is a certain way when it's not. It does not mean disassociating. It does not mean lying to yourself. It does not mean you have to sit there and fight with yourself over what your physical senses can clearly pick up as real. None of that is what it means to ignore the 3D. If you are doing any of those, you can stop. You just stop. Because what this actually means is that through imagination, our 3D can change. All that we are told to do is know and get to a point where we can trust that what we imagine is what ultimately becomes our physical experience. Ignoring the 3D just means that we do not have to take what might be in front of us as final. What it means is that the 3D is malleable and that things are always changing. Things can constantly change. 
because the 3D is just an expression of the state of consciousness you dwell in. It's an expression of what you are feeling and thinking and believing internally. And it's okay if it is what it is. It's okay if the 3D is not ideal yet. To deny the senses and ignore your reality just means that we do not have to take this 3D that is in front of us right now as final. We know that all states are finished, everything is already complete, creation is already in existence, so there is a state of consciousness where what we desire is already a solid fact. And that if we go there to that state in our imagination and feel ourselves in that state as if we were experiencing it in the 3D, if we live in our imaginal acts as if it is now a present fact, then that must become the 3D expression. That must become your 3D experience. So the most important thing that we need to remember when it comes to ignoring your 3D is that it is okay to acknowledge what the 3D looks like right now. We are not trying to deny or play make pretend that the 3D is something that it's not. And one of the many unfortunate habits we fall into of lying to ourselves is never going to work. Do not lie to yourself. Do not try to trick or coerce yourself into believing something that your own physical senses can tell you is true or not. That is going to feel impossible to do. And that is where we run into a boatload of resistance and kickback. Because this isn't about lying to ourselves. This isn't about being in denial. This is not about dissociating from the 3D reality. This is about knowing and understanding that what we imagine becomes our reality. So that regardless of what the physical 3D circumstances look like right now, ultimately doesn't matter because they can change. In fact, the 3D is always changing. That is just what is happening. But when we try to tell ourselves that something is real in 3D when it's clearly not, it is going to be a losing battle. So let me reiterate, this is not about acting as if, this is not about pretending, this is not about lying to yourself. And I cannot stress that enough because this is where a lot of the criticism comes in about the law of assumption, saying that we are telling people to be delusional and to go against what their eyeballs and their ears are telling them. No, we can acknowledge it. We can say, okay, I see that the 3D is the way it is right now and it sucks. So what I can do right now is choose to imagine what my ideal outcome would look like and be like and get familiar with what my desire looks and feels to me in imagination. Because unlike the 3D, our imagination is limitless. We can transcend time. We can go anywhere past, present, or future. It doesn't matter. And here is a little helpful quote from Neville to sort of tie this all up. The imaginative man does not deny the reality of the sensuous outer world of becoming, but he knows that it is the inner world of continuous imagination that is the force by which the sensuous outer world of becoming is brought to pass. He sees the outer world and all its happenings as projections of the inner world of imagination. To him, Everything is a manifestation of the mental activity which goes on in man's imagination without the sensuous reasonable man becoming aware of it. But he realizes that every man must become conscious of this inner activity and see the relationship between the inner casual world of imagination and the sensuous outer world of effects. So we do not need to literally deny the outer world. Instead, it's realizing that it is the inner activity that is the projection onto the 3D. And it is the imagination in that inner world that we want to be paying close attention to because that is what ultimately becomes reflected. If you become aware of something in the 3D that's not great, that's not ideal, you just wanna say, all right, I understand that the 3D is what that looks like right now and that sucks. So what I'm going to do about that is I am going to go into my imagination and enjoy the feeling of what it would be like if 
this other thing was happening instead. Knowing that all of creation is finished and that this is all just one of infinite states being projected at any time, I'm going to take a moment and just imagine what that would be like if I were now faced with what I desire instead of what might be in front of me right now. And the same thing goes for revision, for revising the past and changing our past. What we are actually doing here is not trying to lie to ourselves and tell ourselves that this thing didn't happen. We are acknowledging that this thing happened, but is only one of infinite possibilities that could have happened. So we are just letting ourselves go and entertain a different outcome and something that would have happened and what that would be like instead. What we ultimately want to take away from this is that this has nothing to do with lying or deceiving yourself. Because ultimately, God cannot be mocked. We are not going to be able to lie to ourselves and get away with that. That is not what this is about. All that we are doing is coming to a place of understanding that what we imagine becomes our 3D reality. And that any time we can go into imagination and experience in our imagination what it would be like if we now were the version of us that we desire to be. If we were now living that desired reality that we want to experience. And by doing that, we understand that that is what becomes expressed. And once we do this, once we start living from the place of imagination instead of taking the 3D as final, once we are able to trust our 3D reality is just the projection of our inner world, that is going to give you the power to change and restructure and create anything that you want. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it made sense. I hope it cleared a few things up. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you are interested in checking out any of my other resources, I have links down below to things like my coaching programs, my courses, masterclasses and workshops, my blog, my social channels, my podcast, all that good stuff. Got it down in the description box, so don't forget to check it out. Also, don't forget to check out the other videos on this channel. Don't forget to check out my Manifestation Fundamentals playlist. Each video is a different topic, but they all talk about how to manifest the best life ever. So until we meet again, you guys, as always, please take care, be well, and never forget how powerful you truly are. Happy manifesting, guys.